All right, guys, we're back for episode three. I hope you guys enjoyed the last two of getting the car detrimmed, doing the epoxy primer, as well as the 2K products from Eastwood. So in this episode, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing shot. And I'm gonna show you guys the tricks of the trade. You guys know I've been painting for 28 years, and I'm gonna show you guys all the grits that we use to get a beautiful outcome on this here job. And I'm gonna show you one trick that I think everybody should do no matter how long you've been painting. And I'm gonna go ahead and let you know about that now. All right, so here's what I'm gonna let you guys in on. When you're doing a job and you're not familiar with your products, you're gonna to wanna to do a test run with maybe a couple of the parts. And that's what we have in here now. So I've been painting for 28 years, but each products are different. So I wanna get a feel for my products before I get in the booth with anything that I'm using. That way I can go ahead and adjust when I get the big job in there. So being I hadn't used this clear, I said, you know what? There's no better way for me to actually help you guys out, but by spraying this and doing it the way that I recommend you guys to do it. So you never want to get in a booth or get in your garage or do a paint job without having some experience with these products because with you guys not having the experience that I have, it may be a big problem because you won't be able to recover and get out of it. So what I did was I sprayed the hood in the trunk that way I could get a feel for the product, get a feel for what guns I wanna use, what pressures, how I wanna mix things, if I wanna change them up to the way that I like to spray. And that's what we did in here. So think about that before you get ready for the booth. Maybe get a couple pieces of the job and start out small. That way by the time you get done with those, you have a nice feel for the big part of the job. All right, so here's the car. You guys see it since the last time we did the video, we had the glass company come out and pull the windshield as well as the rear glass on this one. That way we can get a nice paint job around the glass area here. So we did that as well as got the rest of the parts for the vehicle all primed up. So we had the bumpers that needed some attention as well as the rockers, the handles and all the little miscellaneous stuff to get in primer. That way we can get this thing shot. So here's the vehicle. We're gonna go ahead and get started on it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get this thing prepped out. I got Mike here again helping out. He's gotta help on his own car. So we're gonna get this one sanded down today and we 320'd it last time before we primed it. So what we're gonna do now is hit this one with a 400 block, a light small block just on some of the areas that we did do some of the feather edging on. And then we're gonna run around this thing with a 600 on the DA and get it all prepped out. You in on it? Yes, sir. Let's do it. All right. All right, so you guys know from last time, if you've seen the video, we did some body work in this area here, as well as some blocking, and then just primed these smaller waves that it had in the actual body. So we're gonna use a block, and we're gonna go ahead and hit those now with the Fest tool, get everything blocked out, and then we'll refine everything with a 600 grit. Because we are gonna be sealing this with the epoxy from Eastwood. So they recommend using their epoxy as a sealer you reduce it down, I think it's 10% they want you to do, and that way you'll have a nice wet on wet sealer and you won't have to use as much base coat. So we're gonna go ahead and block it down, get it DA'd, and then we'll get back with you guys and show you how it looks once it's finished up. All right, so while I'm doing the body, Mike is on the bumpers and he's sanding these down with a 400 DA. He has the hook and pad on there and we're knocking down the primer. That way we do not have any texture in it. So one thing I could say about this here Eastwood product is it has a nice sheen and it lays down. It doesn't have a lot of orange peel in it. So I did reduce this down. So make sure you take that into consideration. When you're using this, this is a very high build product and you're gonna wanna reduce it if you want it to lay down flatter if you don't need the mill build from the actual primer. So Mike, let's go ahead and get this thing sanded. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and refine that with the 600 on the DA. That way we can get rid of the block marks. If you have a block, sometimes you'll leave straight line gouges in the actual primer, and you're gonna wanna refine that up here with this foam pad that comes on the end of the DA. So this is called an interface pad. It really works well, and it eliminates having any block marks in your primer. So let's go ahead and refine up the areas that we did, the primer work, and then we'll buzz the whole car down and get it all ready. All 
All right, so we've got everything blocked on this here side of the vehicle, as well as refined with the 600 on the DA. So the next step is gonna be hitting all your edges. And I like to handle one side of the vehicle at a time. That way you do not miss anything. We're gonna refine and get all the edges with the Superfine from Kovacs. This is a really nice cloth material that doesn't rip. So you're able to get around all these areas up in here where you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you scuff it well, as well as around your door opening handle holes and get in here. That way you have good adhesion on everything. So as well as hit your edges of your doors, make sure you open them up, run your sandpaper or whatever you're using around the edges to get the paint to stick. You want to make sure you get adhesion because this is the first area that's going to hit something if you're ever in a parking lot and you want to make sure you have good adhesion here. So scuff them up good. All right, one thing I want to show you guys, when you're sanding down the areas, you guys knew we hard lined this around the actual glass because we left the glass in this till we got it ready to prep out because we wanted to keep out the elements outside. So now is when you're going to want to make sure you get all your hard lines sanded down and this is the nice part about doing this with the windows out. You're able to paint down in here nice. That way when they put the glass back in, it looks like a quality job. So these are the things that you want to take into consideration. Pulling your windows if you can. Another thing I'll show you guys is around here on the actual trunks. You'll see a lot of guys, they'll just have a hard line on this. We're going to take this right into the actual body line where the quarter is and the seam sealer. Wrap it up around here once we get to the tape and I'll show you. That way there's no lines of tape. We can go all the way down here, come around here and have this all looking nice when this thing's opened up if Mike ever takes it to a show. All right, so we did the same steps on this here side. We addressed the areas that we did a little bit of blocking on this side, blocked it again. Then we refined everything up with a 600. So we have everything on the vehicle now sanded. I just have to go around with the sky pad and check out this here side. But Mike's over here sanding the bumper down and uh, he's taking quite some time that he actually has only done the bumper while I did the whole car. So we got to get this guy Mike stepping it up here before I finish this whole job out myself. He says the bumper's going to look good gonna though look for good sure. And clean, I'm telling you. <laughs> He's doing a nice job on it. So he is a little bit slower being he does the body work and he doesn't do a lot of the prep. So he's double checking, triple checking because he knows he's got to deal with me. Once I get in that booth, if something's wrong, he's going to have a big problem. <laughs> but all kidding aside, I got to say for the 2K, this stuff sands really nice. It blocks down easy, it sands easy, and it comes out nice and smooth. So this here is a very smooth finish now that we finished this with the 600. And that's gonna give us a nice layer to put down our epoxy on. Cause the coarser you have it, the more it has a chance to settle into those scratches. So you don't wanna go too fine cause you wanna have adhesion, but you also don't wanna go too coarse. That way when stuff dries, it starts to tighten up into the actual scratches. So. We made this one at 600 grit, which will give it a good adhesion for the epoxy sealer, but it won't have a course enough to have any problems with it. So let's go ahead and get this thing blown off and get it in the booth. All right, so after we blow it, and we wipe it down with a dry microfiber towel. It'll really pick up a lot of dust when this is dry. Go ahead and wet the same towel. Open your jams and start to clean these out. So if you want to, if you guys aren't planning on painting the job the same day, you could go ahead and take the car, wash it down, soap it down, and get it all cleaned up. But then you have to fight the water in case it gets down into any crevices. So what I like to do is get a wet towel, blow it out good, wipe it, clean it, that way I can get these things in the booth the same day and still get a nice job. So we're going to go ahead and finish wiping it down and cleaning everything up and uh, get this thing taped up. All 
All right, so Mike is cleaning it now with the wax and grease remover. And once he's done with that, we're gonna do a second stage, which is gonna be the waterborne. So a lot of guys will do the waterborne and then the solvent. I like doing it reversed, because to me, you cut down on the static by using a water-based product after a solvent, because to me, it grounds the panel down. So he's gonna go ahead and wipe everything down with two stages, like we told you guys. You've seen us mask it up. So the better you mask the job up, the better the outcome of your paint job is for your jams being clean without overspray, as well as the job being clean. So you wanna try to seal up every little crevice you have. If you have a hole inside here blowing around, it can let out dirt and dust. So you wanna seal it up. You guys see we bagged it. We try to make sure that we have no gaps in any of our tape. That way we get the cleanest job. So once he gets this wiped, We'll turn the booth on, we'll let it run, and then we'll blow and tack the job off. Really good by hand. You guys know I use my hand. I wash them off. I like to feel the panel for dirt, dust. And then my final thing will be a tack rag coming in and lightly running over the car and getting any less dirt that's on it. So that's the last step. We're gonna go ahead and do that now and then we'll be shooting this. All right, so I was gonna tell you guys when I was mixing up the paint for the hood yesterday, we went ahead and we did the actual stir inside the can because to pour this out of this can, you're gonna lose some of the paint and you don't want that because if you run out of this, it's not like you're gonna be able to mix more for you guys at the house. And uh, so I recommend if you have a stir top, put one of these on, or if you don't, go down to Home Depot and get you one of those plastic things that go inside the gallon here because you don't wanna lose paint trying to pour it out of this. I happen to have a new stirrer, so it was easy for me to just put this on the mixing bank, mix it up, and uh, have this able to be poured right out now and have no waste. So make sure you take that into consideration when you're pouring it out. You don't wanna spill it, and you wanna stir it up good. That way you don't have any of your metallics staying at the bottom of the can, especially if you're doing different stages of the job where you're gonna do something before the other because I've had it through the years, years back doing solvent, you'd pour it out, you didn't stir it good and by the end of your job you have less metallic and you could actually see it in the color of the vehicle. So it's crucial to make sure you get this stuff mixed up and that way you have a consistent flow of paint and your color's gonna match. So let's go ahead and get this thing rolling. All right, so we've applied our sealer. We put one wet coat of sealer on it and we mixed it one to one with a 10% reduction on that. So that's gonna help it flow out. And with an epoxy, you wanna let it set up for about a half hour, depending on your climate. Right now it's a little rainy and damp, but I do have heat in the booth. So with the heat on, it's about 90 degrees right now. And I'm gonna let that set up for about 30 minutes before I move into the base coat. So. All right, so that's one coat of the base coat. And this is a solvent, so you guys know if you follow the channel that we spray water base here. But I've sprayed solvent for many, many years before the water base came out. And sometimes I'll spray it out my own personal shop. So this here is the Segola. That's what we're using today with this paint. 
And this is a really nice gun from Segola, the 4600 Extreme. And I'm pretty sure they have it on the Eastwood site. So if you wanna to try to get similar results, maybe pick up one of the 4600 Extremes and you might be able to get the outcome. So you guys know if you have any problems, you could always reach out to me on Instagram at Car Candy Man. Ask me any questions and, I'm, and feel free to do that. And I don't mind helping you guys out. So we're gonna let one coat dry. We're gonna go in and put another coat and then we'll check it out. All right, so that's coat two. And you guys see there, it's got a nice sheen to it. So once I get two coats on, I'm gonna go ahead and do one more drop coat on the whole thing just to even out all the metallics. The same way that I would do the water base, I do the solvent. So you wanna get your coverage on, and then once you get your coverage on, you're gonna wanna make it nice and even and uniform when you're doing a metallic color like this one. So when I ordered the paint, I ordered it with a slow solvent reducer because I was doing a big job like this. So make sure you guys check what, whatever you're doing, you get that based off of the temperature and the size job that you're doing on this one. So, so far so good. We're gonna be moving into the clear coat once we get the drop coat on. All right, so now that we've got all the base coat on the vehicle, you guys are gonna see me clear in this job and we're using the show car clear from Eastwood. That is a four to one clear. So the one thing that I wanna give you as a tip that I learned when I was doing the hood and the trunk is this clear likes a 1.4 with the gun that I'm using. So I didn't like the way it was spraying with the 1.3, so I switched out to the 1.4 and it put more on and it let it flow out. So this is a thick clear, you're gonna to wanna to break it up and uh, you guys will see it here in a minute once we put some of the coats on how nice it looks. So All right, so we've got all two coats of the clear coat on this one, and I'll tell you what, make sure you get extra clear, because this stuff doesn't go as far as you think. So this one ate up that whole gallon of clear coat. This was a big job. We painted everything off the car, and we put two wet coats of clear on it. So take that into consideration. I mean, I'm telling you, I had it down to the last drop on the last part of the fins and the scoops and the handles in there to get this thing finished up. So it came out nice. I'm gonna bring you guys in there and let me know what you think. Make sure you give this one a thumbs up for Eastwood and uh, let's check it out.
got dirt in it. It's got dirt? A it's dirt. got a couple nibs. Look at this guy laying a hammer on this freaking thing. <laughs> what the? This guy likes to joke around a lot. So let me know what you guys think of the job. I'm pretty happy with the outcome on it for my first time using the Eastwood products. Seems like it's really good stuff. I think you guys will be happy with it for the house. And even if you guys are professionals and you want to pick up a kit, you guys see we did it in a professional environment. So in the next episode, we're going to go ahead, get this thing nibbed out, show you with all the steps of buffing it, build the car and show it to you all finished. And we're going to see if we can get a big smile on Mike's face once it's all done. So we've got a couple nibs in it, nothing crazy. We're going to go ahead and hit those in the next episode. And then we're going to get this thing looking beautiful for him. We'll see you guys on the next one.